Well, I'm joined now from his offices in London by ING's James Knightley. Uh, welcome to you, James. Thanks very much for joining us. Um, I want to start with uh, the U.S. GDP revision. Tell me, what was your reaction to that? Yeah, I mean, it was uh, a little bit disappointing, revised down more than expected. People have been looking for it to remain and change at 2.8%. Um, but I think, you know, there's still pretty good news in there and that uh, inventory rundown continues and it, in fact actually intensified based on the latest data. So that does suggest with sentiment bottoming that inventories may actually be able to make a positive contribution to fourth quarter GDP and certainly first quarter GDP next year. Uh, so that does suggest that there's a pretty good platform for growth uh, in the early part of next year. What are you looking for in the early part of next year in terms of growth? Um, well, we're looking for, it's going to be pretty modest, we have to admit. Um, if you look at what's happening to income growth, well, it's still fairly, fairly tame. But the demands on that income are going to be intensifying over the next few years. So I think in general, we're looking for a fairly modest uh, improvement in consumption growth. I think investment's going to be lagging behind somewhat. But certainly, we'd hope by the second half of next year, we'll be seeing growth uh, clo close to the 2 to 3% mark. What are the big threats to growth in the U.S.? What are your concerns? Well, we're still very concerned about um, how fiscal policy is going to uh, interact with the actual recovery cycle and also, of course, monetary policy. Uh, because, um, as we've seen in the U.K., the U.K. is actually going to be tightening fiscal policy next year and in all likelihood we're going to see interest rates rise as well. Now, in the U.S., that's going to be happening slightly later, but it's still going to be providing the same problems. Income growth for households is going to be fairly flat, while taxes are going to be rising, and interest rates are in all likelihood going to be rising at some point late 2010, 2011. So that does suggest that growth in the medium to longer term is going to be somewhat slower than what we've been used to over the past decade. Let's turn to the UK where we're still talking about a contracting uh, contraction in growth in the third quarter. Why is the UK in such bad shape relative to the US and even other economies here in Europe? Well, I think it boils down to debt. The household sector in the UK was even more indebted than in the US, so there's much more um, sort of correction, if you like, having to happen in the UK household sector, but also in the government sector as well. Fiscal positions even worse than in the US, so fiscal policy is actually being tightened next year, and that implies with, the, with those sort of contraction or those, that impact on growth that the recovery is going to be much slower and, uh, and, and take a lot longer to come through. Very quickly, what was the most interesting thing that came up in this UK GDP release today for you? Well, I think it was actually the consumer spending numbers. We actually got a very small positive uh, despite household savings rates rising. But uh, I think in general we're going to be looking for very muted uh, consumption spending growth. Thanks very much. James Knightley there for us from his offices here in London at ING.